This month on Pocono Mountains Magazine, understanding the big impact short-term rentals have on the Pocono economy. A meaningful program is back up and running, keeping the homeless off the streets by cleaning the streets. And February is the month of love. Take a trip down memory lane as we talk about the iconic heart-shaped tub created in the Poconos. We sit down with the founder's son. And the people behind the camera who take some of the amazing shots you see on Instagram featuring the Pocono Mountains. Hi everyone, thank you for watching Pocono Mountains Magazine for February here in the year 2021. I'm one of your hosts, Jim Hamill, standing next to Frozen Waterfalls at Ledges Hotel in Holly, a beautiful place to visit. And I'm joined by none other than... That's right. Hi everyone, I'm Brianna Strunk. Thanks for joining us. We've got a whole lot on this show for you folks at home to enjoy here in the Poconos. It's cold this time of year, but there's a lot that you could do outdoors, including dining here at Ledges. And Brianna's going to fill you in more on how you can do that next to the waterfalls, even though it's cold, right, Brianna? That's right, Jim. You can enjoy these sites from your own heated greenhouse here at Glass Wine Bar at Ledges. I mean, these views are beautiful in the summertime, but check them out in the wintertime, too. There's a lot coming up on this edition of Pocono Mountains Magazine, but first let's check out some stories where the Poconos have been in the news. February started off with a blast of snow, a storm dropping two feet across the four counties of the Pocono Mountains, caught on time lapse from our cameras positioned throughout the region. MSN says the Pocono Mountains is one of the best places in the U.S. to visit this winter. It calls the Poconos the perfect winter retreat and features Camelback Resort skiing and snowboarding opportunities, plus Aquatopia Indoor Water Park. Forbes featured the Poconos in this article about safety guidelines in place at various ski resorts across the country. Camelback Resort made the short list for its policy to purchase tickets and sign waivers online. The article also highlighted Camelback's innovative outdoor dining experiences, which include food trucks. We're getting a taste of television fame. Fox 56 caught up with coffee entrepreneur Travis Rivera in Honesdale. His business, Black and Brass, was featured in an episode of HGTV's Self Made Mansions as Rivera and his wife searched for and found their family home in the Poconos. Mmm, smells good in here. Hey! You must be Travis. I am. <laughs> I'm Clinton. How are you? Welcome. Also in Honesdale, the Scranton Times Tribune and Chef's Table column highlighted Here and Now Brewing Company and its signature pizzas and beers using local and seasonal ingredients. Pure Wow listed 13 charming small towns in Pennsylvania you might just want to move to. And four, yes, four of them are in the Poconos. Honesdale, Milford, Stroudsburg, and Jim Thorpe all got nods in this article about possible spots to relocate to. Charming indeed. Businesses are hiring, and now with just a few clicks, you can find jobs all throughout the Pocono Mountains thanks to a new job portal. WNEP-TV highlighted this new job openings page created to connect job seekers with top employers across the Pocono Mountains. The Pocono Mountains Visitors Bureau launched the site, which features jobs specifically related to the hospitality industry. The PMVB's CEO said this. I think what a lot of folks really miss is that there are really, really good jobs in our industry that are career building. And it's a great place to start to learn soft skills, how to deal with the, the general public. And um, even if you don't make it a career, it's a great place to start. It's a great place to end, but it's a great place to have an amazing career. Stay tuned for more on the job portal during next month's edition of Pocono Mountains Magazine. Hospitality in the Poconos is an up-and-coming, growing feature. Personally, what I love about being in the hospitality industry in food and beverage is the creativity that we're allowed to have. So you can start out in a part-time position, and really, if you fall in love with it, you can look at full-time positions and really start to grow. You're part of a family here. We do have great income in the Poconos. Pocono hospitality, it's not just our job. It's our passion and our way of life. 
Welcome back. And one of the things that has made news over the last year or so, along with the pandemic, is the real estate market here in the Poconos. It's done exceedingly well, as well as the popularity of short term rentals or Airbnbs, VRBOs, vacation rentals. And we have quite a great history here in the Poconos of vacation rentals. And over the last year or so, families have found weekends or long weeks to spend here in the Poconos away from home, social distancing, getting out and spending money in our communities, supporting mom and pop shops and retail shops, restaurants, as well as places like right here at Ski Big Bear at Masthope Mountain in Pike County. This past year has been one of ups and downs, and on the slopes at Ski Big Bear at Masthope Mountain, the winter season is off to a smooth start. And here in the Poconos, the short-term rental market has been key to survival for businesses big and small. Because there are so many rentals available right around the mountain, you can rent a house and be socially distanced and be with your family exclusively in your own pod. And I think it makes people feel more comfortable in that. The popularity of Airbnb and others has led new families to find the mountains, from cabins to cute bungalows, some right here in the Poconos even make prestigious top 10 lists. The people that are coming up are families. They want to have their own bedroom to escape to, but then come down to a living room where they can watch a movie or they can go into their, their kitchen and cook their own meals uh, rather than just have that living out of a suitcase. They can really unpack and feel like they're um, in, on vacation, but uh, still have that homey family feel that they, that they desire. Will Klaus is both a realtor at Lake Wall and Paw Pack and a short-term rental owner. He's seen the vacation rental market growth, especially within the last year, pay off for the local economy. The short-term vacation rentals really fuel the mom and pop shops locally. We, we have quality uh, lodging establishments with hotels and motels, but only a small handful of them. So uh, in order to sustain the local economy, both macro and micro, uh, we rely on people coming up, spending a week up here. The fact is, vacation rentals have been around for decades. Only recently has the sharing economy boomed, and along with it, real estate prices, including here in Lake Harmony, where Barry and Kari Katz have 10 properties and plenty of demand. I have these lake houses. I am already almost fully booked for the summer. I have um, from the middle of July uh, up through uh, uh, Labor Day already booked with, with about two weekends available, that's it. And as the couple explains, that's on the heels of a year that saw demand increase by about 25%. They don't have to seem to be in the office every day, eight to, you know, or nine to five or whatever it is. Uh, you know, and you, the, remote, the remote working is working for a lot of people. Once the, uh, the people come here and they realize they have all of this, <laughs> why would you go back to this little postage stamp where you don't have this? That these rentals have a major impact on the local economy is not lost on these owners and operators either. So they take care of their tenants and their neighbors, which results in more business for everyone. I mean, when you think about it, it, whether it's a cleaning service or the electrician or the hot tub service, I mean, the number of services that we need is to maintain a house is a lot. And when you have rental houses, it's more so than just a regular house. Not only that, but you can't put a price on some things, including experiences. And that's something the Poconos has plenty of. We have an Instagram site and we ask them, give us some pictures. And these families, they're hiking. They're on the lake, they're uh, on the mountain, they're all over the place sharing us their family stories. And we post them on Instagram. They all come here and they enjoy it. They don't just come and sit, you know, they, they enjoy it. And in turn, the region stands to benefit from increased real estate values, taxes, and a short-term rental market that is here to stay. Jim Hamill for the Pocono Television Network. Thanks, Jim. Homelessness and trash are two really big issues in the Poconos. There's a unique and innovative program solving those issues, and it's back up and running again after taking a little break because of COVID. It's like a life-changing experience for me. Three days a week, Colleen Thomas goes to work, picking up trash throughout Monroe County. It's my community and it gives me something to do. After each shift, she goes back home, 
to either a shelter or a tent in the woods. I mean, it's very difficult. Colleen is part of Pocono Community Caring Company, or Pocono 3C. The program employs homeless and at-risk homeless individuals to clean litter from side and main roads. <laughs> Officer Cruz is always there, keeping them safe from traffic. He takes his job um, very, very seriously when it comes to safety, but he's also a very good person, understands their situation. Employees receive a $50 Visa gift card at the end of each shift. We can buy like food, some of us buy clothes. Pocono 3C is a partnership between Street to Feet, the Municipal Waste Management Authority, and the Pocono Mountains Visitors Bureau. Since the program launched in June 2019, 221 employees have removed nearly 5,500 bags of trash from 250 miles of roadway. We have various volunteer programs. This program has outproduced any other program that I've been involved in in a lot of years. Um, these people are so motivated to give back to the community, They're so motivated to, to, to feel good about themselves, and they feel great about what they do. They outpick every program 10 to 1. The results are incredible. Most homeless individuals don't have an ID, address, or bank account, and some have minor criminal records. Because of these obstacles, they struggle finding work. That's why Pocono 3C is an important stepping stone, helping participants build experience and resume material. Your heart just, you know, I, I've cried over this program. It's been so good. So, it's very emotional. Because of Pocono 3C and her hard work, Colleen has saved up enough money to get her own apartment. Many of her co-workers have had similar success stories, securing homes and full-time employment. But a lot of us work hard and we, we save up what we get from this or we save up money and we get, get out of here. Making a difference with litter and lives. For Pocono Television Network, I'm Brianna Strunk. Thanks for watching Pocono Mountains Magazine. There's still a lot to share, including the latest on dispelling myths about the COVID-19 vaccine and how to get heart healthy this month and throughout the whole year. What's in a promise? It's a way to say that we care. With the Pocono Promise, we're saying that you and your family come first. You and your comfort, you and your experience. And oh, by the way, we want you to have fun. It's the best way to rejuvenate yourself and it's older than, well, the hills. We've always been here and we always will be. Feel the comfort again when you visit the Pocono Mountains. Find us and the Pocono Promise at PoconoMountains.com. Before you hit the slopes at Shawnee Mountain to ski, snowboard, or tube, head to ShawneeMT.com to learn all you need to know about COVID-19 safety precautions, how to buy your tickets, and more in advance. Welcome back to Pocono Mountains Magazine. I'm one of your hosts, Jim Hamill, here at a location in Stroudsburg that has played a significant role in black history. This is Little Bethel AME Church, and in the mid-1800s, it's where African Americans came to worship freely. And as we celebrate Black History Month here, Pocono Mountains Magazine wanted to catch up with local leaders in the black community to find out what the significance of this month means for 2021. Lift every voice and sing. It was only last month when East Stroudsburg University celebrated the life and work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The virtual event was a way to look back, but also forward, and honor people like Krista Caceres, the president of the Monroe County chapter of the NAACP. I'm extremely honored. It's, it's really amazing, and it's just propelling me to continue to do the work that I do. Caceres is one of many in the African-American community in the Poconos who recognizes this Black History Month in 2021 should not only be a reminder of great strides and accomplishments over the years, but also that there's much left to do for racial equality, both locally and nationally. The problem is people know about Black history, people understand it. Um, they think that 
because we have Black History Month, we've arrived. Like Caceres, Tomiko Patterson moved to the Poconos with her family more than a decade ago in search of a better education for her children. Now, she's the first person of color serving as president of the Stroudsburg Area School District and serving on the ESU Council of Trustees. What makes me proud is that my children get to see that they can do anything, right? Um, not just for me and not that school board is a, an amazing feat, but to be the first at anything is, is you know, definitely a, a compliment. Patterson remembers when Black History Month was first recognized in the 70s and her father, while excited, imparted an important lesson to her. I don't know why they make any big deal about it because black history is American history. And he said, and furthermore, in this household, we're going to celebrate black history every day. That's how Cleo Mariabu Jarvis lives, an educator and cultural ambassador, best known as Kwanzaa Mama. Her mission, to give back to the community and bring people together. To educate people about African-American culture, history and culture. Um, because a lot of folks, even African Americans, don't know a lot of things. And uh, I find that knowledge is power, and knowledge brings forth friendship. For some, Black History Month has been a long evolution, including Bishop Kenneth Pierman. For 30 years, he's been a pastor and a force in changing the status quo. And especially in this year of 2019, uh, the last, I'll say the last three years until this present day, We've made some great strides and we're working together more. And therefore, there's a great deal of unity and inclusiveness of all, not just for us, but for all that makes a big difference. This year, especially, Bishop Pierman is hopeful. He recognizes generations of African-Americans who went before paved the way for today's and future generations. When I came here to do the Martin Luther King Day celebration, they said, we're not, we don't have it. They didn't even close school. So we were the ones that started it, and then they, we took our children out. And when we took our children out, they made it like a half a day, then they made it like uh, something for the end school for teachers, and then eventually they gave us the day. Leaders, not just of the African-American community, but of the Pocono community, and celebrating black history this month and always. Let us march on. Jim Hamill for the Pocono Television Network. Coming up on Pocono Mountains Magazine, a local doctor and his patient have an important health message to share just in time for the month of love. And meet our newest kid reporter and see how she's beating cabin fever by experiencing the Pocono Mountains. Isn't it comforting to be around the things we know? Experiences that are tried and true. They give us a feeling of safety and comfort. This is where we can get away from it all. It's time to be happy again and have fun. We've always been here. You and your family's safety is our first priority and it always will be. Feel the comfort again when you visit the Pocono Mountains. Find us at PoconoMountains.com. Before you hit the slopes at Blue Mountain Resort to ski, snowboard, or tube, head to SkiBlueMT.com to learn all you need to know about COVID-19 safety precautions, how to buy your tickets, and more in advance. Welcome back to Pocono Mountains Magazine for February 2021. I'm Jim Hamill, and for this discussion, we're back in the studio with the healthcare experts from St. Luke's University Health Network, specifically St. Luke's Monroe campus. And we're going to provide some critical information about the COVID-19 vaccine, which is being rolled out in its first phase in Pennsylvania as we record this in January. Joining me is Dr. Douglas Degler to my left. He is the chief of medicine at St. Luke's Monroe and Lori Smickle to my right is registered nurse and oversees the intensive care unit at St. Luke's Monroe campus. And finally, to my far left is Dr. Eric Tesferero, who has handled critical care medicine at St. Luke's. And I want to thank each of you guys for joining us today and discussing this very important topic. Uh, we want to begin by debunking any myths or conspiracies that are out there, leading to some distrust in people regarding the vaccine. Dr. Degler, you have patients, I'm sure quite a few of them, and I'm sure you get an earful from them. Is it safe? Is it are, are, are they hesitant to get that vaccine? And why, and how do you handle those questions as they come to you? That's a great question, Jim, and, and thanks for having me here today. 
I will say uh, the overwhelming majority of my patients are very excited to get the vaccine. They contact me frequently. When can I get it? How do I go about getting it? Okay, some of my patients are eager to get the vaccine, but just want reassurance that it is right for them and it is safe for them. And then I have uh, a, mon a minority of patients who are afraid of it for one reason or another, okay? And the, the pushback that I get is, well, it can't be safe because we, we rushed through it. And to that, I say, well, there were no steps skipped in uh, bringing this vaccine to market. It was just, you know, they went through phase one, phase two, phase three, like any other vaccine in history. It's just that some of the steps were done simultaneously and the vaccines were being produced while they were still being tested so that once they were proven safe and effective, which they have been, um, they're ready to hit the market. And we have had a tremendously successful campaign in getting uh, these vaccines out to the people who need them most. And we're hoping to continue with that. So far, so good. Lori, as a nurse, you are on the front lines and uh, have been for many months now. And given that the vaccine uh, trials have shown that they are effective in preventing illness. Uh, you and your colleagues have taken the shot, no doubt, and can likely speak from experience. You'd rather the vaccine than the worst case scenarios you see on a daily basis. Yes, absolutely. Um, I myself have received the vaccine, as have all my colleagues up here, and, um, and a very nice number of our St. Luke's Health Network staff have also received the vaccine. The disease that we're seeing in these patients, young and old, um, mild side effects to very adverse effects. And it's very hard watching these patients suffer. We now have this vaccine. And yes, there are some adverse effects that you may see um, when you get the vaccine, but this is our opportunity to help end this virus. And this is now the light that we're all looking forward to at the end of this dark tunnel that we've seen. And any severe reactions that we've seen out there are, are very, very rare. I mean, on such a small scale, right? Absolutely. So very severe reactions to the vaccine, as you mentioned, are extremely rare. Um, there are some mild reactions that people are getting from the vaccine, uh, fever, fatigue, mild aches and pain, um, and, and in your joints and muscles. These seem to subside over a day or two um, and, and can be treated with things like Tylenol or an NSAID. Um, and really, when you think about the small likelihood of a reaction to the severity of the disease, we really want you to be getting the vaccine. Makes a lot of sense there. Dr. Tess Ferrero in the grand scheme of things, this may seem some to some like a short time frame from a vaccine being developed. Like the doctor here said, uh, explain how the COVID vaccines have been able to be done in such a short period of time, um, especially as, as it relates to other vaccines that have been de developed over years. So um, as Dr. Degler explained, you know, those things were being run in succession to each other throughout the phases. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were even talking about more vaccines that are coming online more, like, more than likely. That's a great summary and a great question, Jim. And like Dr. Degler said, a lot of the steps here were run simultaneously instead of in series and with production being ongoing with the trials itself. We were able to adopt some existing technology that was originally researched over 10 or 15 years ago with some of the other respiratory pandemics that happened in the early tech, um, 2000s and then adopt that to the um, SARS-CoV-2 or the COVID illness here and basically plug and play the appropriate information in there to get the vaccine out into the public. Yeah, uh, Lori, you've seen the, you know, parents and children, I'm sure are, are in the forefront of everybody's minds too. I have young kids and mm -hmm. uh, so, so do many others. What are the best ways that parents can protect children, even though children are not necessarily eligible for this vaccine at this point? Right, so uh, as we know that children are not currently eligible for the vaccine. So the best thing that a parent can do to not only protect themselves and their family, but specifically to protect their children is to get the vaccine. The last thing you wanna do is bring something home to, to a child. You know, I am a new mom myself. I have a 13 month old son at home. I came back to work and we were hit with the COVID surge uh, last year. So it's been very challenging. And I know there are a lot of struggles that parents go through every single day. How do you keep your children safe, right? It's your most uh, important role as a parent, keeping your children safe. And right now we have an answer for that. And that is to get your vaccine. By getting your vaccine as a parent, you're doing the best thing that you possibly can to protect your children at home. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Degler, we're seeing patients face a long road to recovery, sometimes with residual illness from COVID. Uh, is that an even greater reason to get the vaccine? I think it is a great reason uh, to get the vaccine. If we look at um, people have 
since the, the beginning of this pandemic, tried to equate this to the flu. So we know that the, um, the COVID is uh, five to 10 times more lethal than the flu. And we are seeing uh, post-COVID illness, it's uh, almost a syndrome where people are having residual chest pain and shortness of breath, uh, brain fog or cognitive difficulties. They're having uh, persistent joint pains and fatigue that can last months after the illness itself. Uh, trying to equate the um, uh, morbidity and mortality of COVID to seasonal flu, I've been a doc for 25 years, and I would say over that time frame, if I have one or two patients hospitalized with influenza a year, that's a lot. Whereas in the last six months, it's been dozens. And the, the um, mortality rate that we're seeing with the flu as compared to COVID-19, you know, 0.1, 0.2% for flu, whereas it's 1.2% mortality, uh, I'm sorry, 1% to 2% mortality for COVID. And if you look at the data, if you look at the case fatality rate for COVID-19, you don't reach a 1% mortality until age 60. But by the time you're 80, you have a 10 to 20% chance of succumbing to this illness. And so when I'm trying to encourage patients to get their vaccine, you have to look at the big picture. Uh, being a doc is sometimes like being a parent, um, <laughs> oftentimes easier than being a parent, but you have to tell the patient in front of you, it might not all be about you. It's about the people that you come in contact with. We all have, as Lori said, uh, either children at home that we wanna protect or parents or grandparents that are gonna be much more vulnerable and susceptible to serious illness if they get infected with COVID-19. So it's about the short-term effects, it's about the long-term effects, it's about the safety of not only ourselves, but our families and our communities. So, you know, some of the people who have uh, come to me and have been vaccinated feel that they have done their part as uh, a citizen by getting vaccinated so that they're not going to be a vector to spread the virus to somebody who may be more vulnerable than themselves. Uh, that's well put, very well put. Uh, uh, the St. Luke's experts do believe that these COVID-19 vaccines are the best shot against the pandemic. And you can certainly learn more about the COVID-19 vaccine at sluhn.org slash vaccine. And uh, I want to thank the doctors and nurse Lori here for joining us today. You guys uh, really have provided a, a great immense uh, amount of confidence, I think, for, for our viewing public. And, and you're, you're great leading examples of, of what our communities should be doing, which is talking to each other about these things so that we get the proper information. Because as you can all probably attest to, there's been a lot of myths and, and everything out there. So I'd ask Dr. Tesserero, would you like to leave our viewers with anything right now? I think the most important thing I've figured out in the last year is just how interconnected we are as a group of people. And it's so important how any one decision we make affects all of us around us. So the importance of this consideration and really giving the choice of vaccination careful consideration to protect those in your circle is probably the most important thing you can do. All right, Lori, would you would you like to add anything? I, I think Eric worded that great. I mean, we we work so well together. You want to be going on vacation again. You want to have that time with your family, grandparents, you know, people you haven't been able to see and hug in in months and in almost a year. So really getting this vaccine, as I said before, this truly is the light. There is hope. We have great science and we need to trust in that science um, and, and protect ourselves and our families. And I think trust is really the operative word here. I, you know, you folks are extremely trustworthy individuals having gone to school for this and practiced this and been through this for months and months and months. And now, um, you know, th this is a very vital part of this, this next step to get through and get things back to somewhat normal. Thank you, each of you, for joining us today and everything that you guys do in the hospital setting, in the community, and speaking up for these vaccines. Thanks for joining us. Again, I'm Jim Hamill with Pocono Mountains Magazine, and we'll be right back to the program after this. Extraordinary care, outstanding patient experience, accessible services, 
When you choose St. Luke's Monroe Campus, you choose compassionate care delivered by our highly trained staff of healthcare professionals, all powered by the strength of St. Luke's University Health Network. These are the Pocono Mountains, 2,400 square miles of unparalleled majestic beauty. The American bald eagle calls these mountains home. This heaven on earth was created for all of us to enjoy our lives and our place with nature. But littering is a problem. We found this place clean and green. Let's keep it that way. Please help. Go to pickupthepoconos.com. Before you hit the slopes at Jack Frost Big Boulder to ski, snowboard, or tube, head to jfbb.com to learn all you need to know about COVID-19 safety precautions, how to buy your tickets, and more in advance. February is the month of love, so there's no better time to talk about the heart, specifically heart health. Check out this story from a local patient and his doctor. 60-year-old Perry Singer suffers from Barrett's esophagus. The condition causes frequent chest pain and intense heartburn. It, it almost takes your breath away. In early November, Perry felt off and thought he might be having another attack. But this time it was different because the pain wasn't localized right here in the middle of my chest. It was kind of like across my chest here. It was a different pain and up underneath my arms. The next day, Perry had a previously scheduled appointment for blood work at St. Luke's Monroe campus. And when I came into the hospital, the lady said, oh, you're all right. She's like, you don't look so good. The normal appointment became anything but. Doctors confirmed Perry had a heart attack. Within an hour, he was brought to this room and had several stents put in to correct multiple blocked arteries. I couldn't believe it. Dr. Vidya Panathpur, also known as Dr. P, is Perry's cardiologist. The heart attack is what we see typically people are worried about. Dr. P says common signs of heart attack include heaviness in the chest and chest pain spreading to the arm, neck, or jaw. But it's not always that simple. Some people may not necessarily have those classic symptoms of chest pain. They could have dizziness, they could have uh, profuse sweating, they could be short of breath more than usual. People who have high cholesterol, high blood pressure, diabetes, are overweight or smoke are most at risk. Family history plays a role too. And yes, anxiety and stress can precipitate or increase the chances of you having a heart attack. According to the CDC, Someone in the U.S. has a heart attack every 40 seconds. That means every year about 805,000 Americans experience a heart attack. And about one in five heart attacks is silent, meaning the damage is done, but the person is unaware. Since symptoms are different for everyone, it's important to call 911 or visit the hospital right away if something doesn't feel right. Every minute you're losing, or every few minutes you're losing, part of your heart muscle is not getting blood supply. Dr. P says every second could mean the difference between life and death, as Perry learned. He told me if you didn't come in, we would not be standing here talking. You would have died. But two months later, Perry is already back to work delivering propane and woodworking, one of his favorite hobbies. His new routine includes medication, diet, and exercise changes. Small adjustments, he says, in exchange for the gift of life, thanks to the team at St. Luke's. It was amazing. Uh, St. Luke's, I just can't believe the level of care. Um, I got phone calls uh, when I got home from the doctor, the surgeon, the nurses that took care of me while I was here. Um, I just couldn't believe it. I like, you know, who, who does that? I'm lucky to be here, you know. Speaking of the heart, a beloved heart-shaped icon was founded in the Poconos. Coming up, we'll take you down memory lane.
throw trash and recycling in the correct bins, what about cigarettes? When you flick a filter, you're littering plastic. We need to trash cigarettes the right way. Keep America beautiful, and Monroe County's Waste Authority wants us all to live without litter. The Poconos is not your ashtray. is all about heart-shaped jewelry, cards, candies, and tubs. The iconic heart-shaped tub founded right here in the Poconos is known throughout the world and it's drawn millions of lovers to our region. The local history is fascinating. So let's jump right in. <laughs> The 1950s were all about Elvis Presley. It's when Barbie and McDonald's were invented. Also in this decade, Morris Wilkins and his business partner, Harold O'Brien, purchased Hotel Poco Paw Pack. So Morris and Obie, this big Irish guy and this little Jewish guy, got together and bought a little resort on Lake Wallen Paw Pack. Without any experience in the hospitality industry, they renamed the 18-room hotel Cove Haven and began marketing it as a honeymoon resort. They saw that it was an instant winner. Five years later, in 1963, Morris created the iconic heart-shaped tub and business boomed. That was the type of guy he was. He was always thinking outside the box. I don't think Morris Wilkins had a box. Then in 1971, Life Magazine featured Cove Haven's heart-shaped tub in this impressive two-page spread. That exposure solidified the Poconos as honeymoon capital of the world. There wasn't any place you could go that you went and said, I was from the Poconos. Oh, the heart-shaped bath. Everybody knew the Poconos. Other honeymoon resorts began opening in the Poconos, from the popular Penn Hills to Birchwood Resort, Mount Airy Lodge, Fernwood, Strickland's, and Pocono Gardens. These guys were, were pioneers, and while we competed during the day for the honeymooners, um, at nighttime they all broke bread together. And Morris wasn't finished yet. Your very own champagne glass whirlpool. In 1984, he created the Champagne Tower, a seven foot tall jacuzzi bath exclusively at Cove Haven. It was so popular, guests had to make reservations a year in advance. This is something so unique, you don't find that everywhere. So when you're coming for that intimate special moment with your special loved one, you know, it just adds to the, um, the flavor of everything that's going on. Out of Cove Haven grew three other properties, all eventually purchased by Caesars. It was actually very luxurious back then. They have carpet on the walls, the mirrors on the ceilings, and the heart-shaped tubs and the, the champagne glasses. Aside from the lavish, romantic rooms... All the glamour, excitement, and sheer beauty. Honeymooners came from all over the world to experience the vibrant nightlife and fancy dinner drink menus. And the Poconos was a breathtaking backdrop for activities like horseback riding, swimming, snowmobiling, tennis, archery, and biking. So it was just like a cruise ship on land. And the resorts hosted many famous guests and entertainers. <laughs> Regis Philbin, Rodney Dangerfield, Hal Linden, Joan Rivers, Howie Mandel, Frank Vincent, and Kevin James among the big name performers. Andy Griffith and other stars filmed a made-for-TV movie at Cove Haven. New York Yankees pitcher Whitey Ford golfed at Penn Hills, while legendary boxer Sugar Ray Leonard trained at Brookdale. And that's Morris in the middle. We knew how to work, and we knew how to have a good time. After an exciting 40 years in the hospitality industry, Morris retired in the late 1990s. He passed away in 2015 at 90 years old. The honeymoon capital of the world eventually transitioned into the indoor water park destination that the Poconos is known as today. But Morris's memory lives on. Kalahari Resort installed heart-shaped tubs in several suites. That's a tribute. 
And the Cove Haven properties continue keeping romance alive for couples with heart-shaped tubs and champagne towers. Even the original Hotel Poco Paw Pack still stands, serving as Cove Haven's spa. Mara should be remembered for the innovative thinking that he and all of the other families did and the recognition of taking a little heart-shaped bath and turning it into a honeymoon empire and really putting the Poconos on the map. One man's passion, keeping passion alive for millions of lovers. Back here at Cove Haven, the properties are open year round, ready to spice up your love life. Book your stay on PoconoMountains.com. Now, let's check in with Jim. Heart-shaped tubs this time of year, you really can't beat it, especially when it's so frigid outside. And for so many kids here in the Poconos, they've been cooped up during these months and trying to find ways to get outside and maybe try something new. So one of our newest kid reporters decided it was time to learn to get on a board and shred down the mountain. You know, I'm kind of tired of being online all the time. School and hanging out online on video games with my friends. Why don't we take our jacket and head outside and see what we could do? Hey guys, I am here at Ski Big Bear at Mastoat Mountain and I'm gonna get a snowboard lesson. How's it going, Zoe? I'm Nick. I'm going to be your instructor today. Have you ever snowboarded before? Um, no. No? This is your first time? Mm-hmm. I started off my first ever snowboard lesson by meeting my instructor, Nick. He went over some of the basics. So this part right here is your heel edge. So this part is your toe edge. You see the metal pieces that go all the way around? Mm -hmm. That's what's going to help you turn, stop, slow down. Then it was time to get on the board. Nick showed me how to move around and walk. It was a little hard to balance at first. There you go. You all right? Yeah. It's okay though. Learning to fall and get back up is the next part of the lesson. Perfect. Okay, it's time to start surfing on the snow. After a few practice runs on the flat ground outside the snow sports school, it was time to head over to the beginner slope. Lots of kids my age and younger learning to ski or snowboard, and that gave me a boost of confidence. I had some slips and falls, but I made it down the hill. My instructor, Nick, gave an update on my progress. Especially with new people who have never snowboarded before, it's hard to get that edge control and not lean back or forwards when they're digging that, those edges in. Um, so right now, Zoe just needs to work a little bit on keeping her head and shoulders over that board and learning to get that balance down. One of the fun things once you make it down the hill is riding the magic carpet back up to the top. So you don't actually have to get on a chairlift to go up the mountain, which could be intimidating to a new skier, but you know, after you do the magic carpet a few times and you do that easier run and then you're, you're excited to actually get on that chairlift and take that big ride in the sky, you know, and go on a more advanced trail. Ski Big Bear at Mastoat Mountain has a great snow sports school if you're looking to head out for the first time. To book your next lesson, head to skibigbear.com. And it is a great family activity. Um, mom and dad and the kids can get out here together and take a, a group lesson or, or a private lesson individually. They can progress at their own individual rate. Try to keep those toes up, all right? I learned a lot in my one hour lesson and hopefully next time I hit the slopes, I can carve the mountain like plenty of skiers and snowboarders were. Hey guys, I had a lot of fun here um, getting snowboard lesson and everything. You guys could come out too and get a snowboard lesson or have some fun over here. I'm Zoe Gregory for the Pocono Television Network. We've seen the concern in your eyes. You're scared, nervous, want to know if it's safe. The answer is yes. At LVHN, you'll see the extraordinary steps we take to get you the care you need safely. At all our facilities, you'll see temperature checks for everyone that we sanitize every surface. And yes, you'll see that masks are required. What we look forward to seeing is relief in your eyes. Lehigh Valley Health Network, your health deserves a partner. 
hit the slopes at Camelback Resort to ski, snowboard, or tube, head to camelbackresort.com to learn all you need to know about COVID-19 safety precautions, how to buy your tickets, and more in advance. The Pocono Promise was created to show you that we all are committed to the safety and welfare of our guests and team members. The Pocono Mountains is a fun and safe place to visit. We promise. We Pocono Promise. Hey everyone, finally here on Pocono Mountains Magazine for February 2021. We wanted to feature some of the wonderful photographers who capture the essence of the Pocono Mountains from as far south as Jim Thorpe to the northern end here on the upper Delaware River. It's a beautiful time of year no matter what time of year, winter, spring, summer, or fall. And those photographers are able to capture those images, upload them to social media, and as the saying goes, the best camera you have is the one on you. Matt Cannon has been pointing his Nikon on the Poconos for a few years now, capturing the region's beauty, including here along the Lehigh River. And Andrea Killam, another professional photographer, has been going the distance for amazing views, including here along the Delaware River. Both are among the many of us who share images of the Pocono Mountains with the world via social media, Instagram, and others. The Poconos offer really a great dynamic elevation change. You could be at 400 feet in one minute, and an hour later, you're 1,500 feet. Um, so it, there's great change and gives photography a lot of depth. Uh, so the light hits really well, uh, casting across valleys, and it's just beautiful to be up here. Cannon, whose handle is at Matt's Focus, took us on a shoot along the Lehigh River near Jim Thorpe. He only started photography a few years ago and now is making a living doing it. But it's more than just that. It's a love for the subject matter, whether it's skyscrapers in the Big Apple or downtown Jim Thorpe, a favorite of Matt's to shoot. Just recently, the at Pocono Tourism Instagram account featured Matt's work and followers showed their love in return. Jim Thorpe is, I think, really an eclectic cool like it's it's not something you would expect to find in the northeastern area of pennsylvania uh, and it, it's really charming uh, and i love just how intimate that little main street of town is andrea killam has the same love for the delaware here on her friend's sylvania tree farm near lackawaxen not only has she taken stunning images like these She's also done work for some iconic Pocono resorts. We do have um, beautiful historical destination um, locations like Skytop Lodge, where I've been fortunate enough to shoot, and, um, and you know, the lodge at Woodlock. And Killam helps make them stand out. She also aims to help people by telling their stories through still images. I try to share positive, beautiful things. I think that, you know, we're all inundated with enough of the opposite every day. And certainly I, I hear a lot of positive feedback from people that they appreciate it and it's like a respite for the eyes and Instagram for me has helped get my work out there. For both photographers and countless others, the Poconos is an ideal focus for their lenses and encourage everyone else to get out and take photos no matter what you use. In this area, there are endless opportunities to get strong photos whether you're a pro or a hobbyist. And right now, during the COVID pandemic, people are missing that human connection. And I think seeing pictures of people just living their daily lives, if that's, you know, helping someone get through their day a little better by like seeing life the way that it actually is, that, that's a great thing. And I like to show that. Taking photographs, but giving a whole lot more back to all of us. Jim Hamill for the Pocono Television Network. And speaking of photos, we would love to see and feature yours. Just tag us on social using the hashtag YesPMVB. Photos could come from your professional grade camera or your cell phone. And there's a statewide photo initiative going on as well, right Jim? Yeah, Brianna, you're right. One Lens is a statewide virtual photo exhibit that you can contribute up to three photos online at pa.gov slash one dash lens 
And the idea is to tell the story of what it's been like to live through the pandemic over the last year here in the Poconos and across Pennsylvania, highlighting stories about frontline workers as well as your family, your neighborhoods, and your communities. And so we'll sort through those images uh, with a statewide panel and determine which ones are most representative of the perseverance and the resilience of our communities throughout this entire ordeal. Submissions end on March 8th, and then we'll go through the photos. I'm part of the statewide uh, initiative to help determine which photos are most representative of our area as well as the rest of Pennsylvania. And so we look forward to seeing everything that you submit to One Lens. And thank you again for watching Pocono Mountains Magazine for February. We'll be back next month and hopefully it'll be a lot warmer, Brianna. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you again soon.